Well, morning, everyone, um, and welcome to our fifth uh, video Back to Business webinar on working smarter with technology. I'm Craig Gower, business advisory partner with BDO Auckland, um, and I'm here today with Carl Ferner and Josh Ambler from BDO Information Systems. Um, oh, sorry, showing previous slide, please. Um, both Carl and Josh are consultants with BDO IS. Um, Carl specialises in the implementation of ERP and cloud finance systems. Uh, he particularly um, works on Sage, um, MYV, and, and Zero products. Um, and Josh has expertise in Zero and, and cloud products, including e commerce, operations, and logistics. So during the lockdown, many of us had to adjust to different ways and remote ways of working. Um, personally, I found you know, scanning documents, you know, reading multiple screens, um, going through invoices of approval processes and payment processes, um, which were challenging and, and definitely took longer than, than working in the office. And no doubt you all have found your own challenges um, with technology and, and working in the remote environment um, and having to adjust your your business processes to meet sort of remote ways of working. Um, during the lockdown, um, we continued implementing systems for clients remotely, which I, I think is one of the benefits of cloud-based systems. Um, specifically, uh, we've been working on e-commerce solutions, accounts payable automation, um, more scanning, payment approval process, um, finance and, and reporting solutions. So today, um, what we're going to cover is uh, the, the process from um, online ordering and fulfillment um, through to invoicing and, and collection. So we're going to look at uh, e-commerce solutions um, and fulfillment uh, inventory management, and then talk about um, how to manage supplier and customer payments um, and, and invoice processing. And then Carl's also going to look at uh, business reporting options. Um, so Josh will present the first section, which is um, around the e-commerce and logistics, and Carl will review the finance, finance reporting and application side. So over to you, Josh. Thanks, uh, I'm one of the consultants here at Video Information. Rushed to the start selling online, and um, I think some underestimated the logistical and operational processes behind that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, um, pros and cons of e-commerce, and then we'll take you through a little demo of, of how we see the um, e-commerce process working and, and what we see our clients doing. So why have we? What are the pros of e-commerce? I'll just get Charlene to move to the next slide. Shelling, thank you. E-commerce, what's to like? Well, obviously low contact was a big bonus through the lockdown, um, and perhaps that's gonna be part of the norm moving forward. We're not sure what that looks like, but e-commerce provides that low contact model um, where we don't have lots of customers in one place, but they're all online, and, and we're able to get products out to them with, without too much human interaction. So that was a big bonus for e-commerce during the lockdown. Um, from a business point of view, some of the some of the positives of e-commerce are still very relevant. You know, fast cash flow, the money comes in instantly. For those brands and producers that are selling direct, it's higher margin. Very engaged customers online, which is positive. You've got the ability to target your traffic to whoever you like, um, rather than just having a, a bricks and mortar shop that's on High Street and, and not really having much control over who wants to buy. You've very much got that control online. Um, and one of the major benefits is that e-commerce solutions are are actually quite low cost and they're set up and the overheads can be lower compared to bricks and mortar, so that's still very much a, a big benefit for e-commerce. Interestingly, um, there's still a misconception out there that e-commerce websites are expensive. Um, for an example, we had a, one of our brewery clients contact with us early in the lockdown and they needed to get online desperately to, to keep their sales up. We were able to turn around an e-commerce site integrated through to their back end in less than four days and they managed to do more than 150 sales in the first weekend. So the, the, the cost to getting into these solutions and getting online is, is not high anymore. It's a very low cost proposition. Um, 
and it's something that I guess every retailer and, and wholesaler should be looking at if they're not already, because the barrier to entry is very low. You see here that the number one top line is that they can that they can do it 24 hours a day. So I think people need to get their head around that. You know, e-commerce never never stops and it's always open. Um, and as much as 95% of shopping will be facilitated by e-commerce in the future, so not going anywhere. It's very very relevant at the moment. Um, and we're seeing a lot of customers move towards e-commerce solutions. There are some pitfalls though. Um, like any business, e-commerce has its challenges and anyone who's selling online will be familiar with these problems. Overselling when you don't have enough stock, underselling when you never had the stock in the first place, but the demand is there. Tracking all those delivery, delivery packages through the logistics network can be a challenge. Um, angry customers, uh, e-commerce retailers will know this well. They're a very picky bunch of e-commerce customers. They have spoiled for choice and so they have very high standards around how they shop online. Fraud is an interesting one. Um, we've seen examples of, I'll give you an example of a fashion retailer that used to uh, offer loyalty points with, their, with all their sales. Um, and one customer realized there was a loophole in the system and so they would buy a whole lot of goods and then return it because they had such a free returns policy. Meanwhile, they were accruing all those loyalty points uh, to the tune of several thousand dollars before the retailer actually realized what was going on. So fraud is, Definitely uh, uh, an issue for online retailers. I guess not a lot different to bricks and mortar with install uh, theft, but um, just a different sort of version of it, really. And then the the real bane of re e commerce retailers' lives is abandoned carts. And um, many of you may not realize that up to 70% of shopping carts are abandoned at the checkout. But with simple automation, up to 50% of those can be recovered. Um, so it highlights how automation is really the key to success with e commerce. So today I'm going to talk through a solution that we use a lot. It's kind of considered our standard e-commerce stack, although some of these options here are interchangeable, but this is a solution that I use a lot. Um, many of you might use Shopify websites or, or have heard of people using Shopify websites. In this case, we're going to show WooCommerce. Um, a different platform, but same result really. We're going to talk through the order process online and how that flows down into the inventory system. Got some nice automation around stock available updating. We're going to show that order flowing down into a shipping system called Starship It. That flows all the customer details down, and then the tracking details get pushed back up into the inventory system and sent out to the customer. Might touch on a little bit of stock forecasting if we get time, and then I'll pass over to Carl around how that all flows into the back end system. Just give me a second here, I'm going to take over and um, start with a little demo. Okay, so this is our lovely BDO e-commerce website. We can buy all sorts of e-commerce uh, BDO merchandise. I'm sure you'd all love to have one of these beautiful hoodies and drink our lovely wine. Let's place an order here. Okay, we're gonna get a bottle of wine. Through the checkout process. You'll notice that because I'm a returning customer, all my details are here, so that's a nice experience. I don't have to re-enter all of that. I'm just going to add a little note here to say, leave it front door. Remember all my details. Place that order. Easy. Now if we go and have a look at Sim 7, which is the inventory system. All of those orders get passed down automatically into, into our sales order list. You can see I've done a few previously. Drill down and have a look at one of those. See all my details, my address details, the delivery instructions, product, it's all passed down. And importantly, we've got our stock updating, we've got our physical stock here and our available stock here. And it's important that the e-commerce system is looking at the available stock, which is taking into account all of the open orders. The important thing about that is that we don't oversell. It's a really bad experience for a customer if you buy something online, only to get a phone call two days later to say it's actually not available. We're happy with that order. 
push it down to the shipping system because we're ready to dispatch that. All of those details are now passed down to Starshipper. So Starshipper is a great little shipping tool that integrates directly with the couriers, and you can have multiple couriers here too, um, and you would use different couriers for different reasons. DHL, for example, would be international, and New Zealand Post would be local. I might just import that order and see if that works. Generally, this is happening automatically, but um, just going to prompt it so that we've got something to work with. Here. OK, so it's brought down product. We can see customers details here. We've got the delivery instructions. Check the pack size, make sure we've got it on the right courier. There's the courier cost. We're happy with that. Just going to print a label. See here that we've got our shipping label ready to paste on the box. So no data entry, no rekeying, uh, no having to go between different systems to, to get that order to flow through its process. And the nice thing about Starship is what it's done now is it's actually pinged out an email to the customer with all the tracking details and a lovely branded tracking page where the customer can track this throughout its process. It's really frictionless. It's good customer service, um, and if we think about uh, think about your own experiences online, um, those those providers that are giving you this level of service, they're the ones that you keep going back to. It saves all those phone calls to the company to say, "Hey, where's my package? Did you receive my order?" All automated. Um, it's just a nice, simple process. Just seen another one come through too. Okay, just going to touch a little bit on um, stock forecasting here. Um, certainly, when volume is high, you can have issues around stock replenishment, particularly with e-commerce when you get on a bit of a run with sales or you do a promotion and things are selling fast. It's quite a problem sometimes if things run out if you run out of stock, and it's certainly a good way to lose customers if you're not fulfilling orders. So this tool here is a great little uh, stock forecasting tool that. It works out based on your previous rate of sale and, and how and, and your lead times for purchasing. Gives you some information back to say, hey, we're going to run out of the stock in seven days. And if we run out of the stock in seven days, we're going to be losing $138 a day based on previous sales. So nice simple information, but very powerful. Um, and we can just go through this. Say, so yes, yes, we definitely need to buy that. We don't want to run out of that. We'll lose a lot of sales. So we'd place the PO. That would automatically come back into Sun7 as a purchase order. Okay. So at the end of this process, there would be um, some invoices waiting there. You'd have a lot of sales orders sitting in the system that have been processed. And one of the challenges for e commerce retailers is to is to reconcile a lot of those little sales. Um, it's a different process to a shop closing up or, or a wholesaler posting on account sales. It's quite often different payment types involved like Stripe and PayPal. Each one of those has a different reconciliation method so it can get quite messy. Uh, and one thing that Sin7 does really well is um, it gives you the ability to batch those sales. So we can we can roll up a whole lot of, you know, it could be a week's worth of sales or a day batch it by payment type and send it through to zero. So out of this process, we're sending it through to zero. It's, it's just one bulk invoice, really. That makes it a lot easier to reconcile. It also protects zero a little bit from um, volume. I've seen e-commerce retailers with, with really high volume that um, put too much of a load on zero. So the batching process gives us the ability just to just to protect zero a little bit from that and, and keep it doing what it's good at, which is the financial reporting. So I'll pass over to Carl now. We can talk a little bit more around the back office process. Over to you, Carl. Thanks, Josh. Just moving over to the next slide. 
So what I'm going to talk about is yeah the next step in that process. Um, just some of the which is in the the accounting and back office slides. Um, you know your accounts payable, receivable, sort of the, the accounting and, and receiving the money and paying the bills. So a lot of this is still quite manual these days. Um, when actually it's really easy to to automate a lot of these processes. Um, so it, you know that it stops just all that back office bookkeeping being a, a slow process. Um, the first one that I want to talk about is is the accounts payable process. So, so paying your bills. So a lot of businesses still do this really manually. They might be getting a bill, printing it out, someone's manually typing it into the system. Uh, if it needs to be approved, you know they're stamping it with a stamp. They're writing a code on it walking over to somebody's desk you know putting on somebody's desk and having to you know ask them hey have you signed that off have you signed that off uh, and, and you can imagine when we went into remote working uh, where everyone's sunny at home that was going to be difficult so what i've got on the slide here is one example of uh, automating the process using cloud apps with with zero uh, you could do this with, with other other accounting systems as well um but to talk through it so starting with your receipt bank or your hub doc, this allows you to, when you receive that invoice from your from your supplier, you know they usually email it these days, you get a PDF. You don't need to print it out, you don't need to type it in, it just goes straight into receipt bank, which automatically reads the information, who the supplier is, what's the amount, what's the GST. It automatically can code it and fire it straight through to zero without you having to do anything. The user might review it, or they might have set rules and it's completely automatic. So it's going to go straight to zero. It's going to be as awaiting approval. And then that's where approval max can pick it up from zero and send it off on, on to get approved. So some businesses have, you know, complex approval processes. Certain bills need to be approved by, you know, the manager of that department. Or if it's if it's over a certain amount of money, you know, the CFO might want to look at it. Well, if it's just a small bill, you know, just the, the, the office manager can look at it. Um, and if it's over a really large amount, maybe the CEO wants to look at it as well. So that's, you know, it could be two, three people needing to sign it off, uh, depending on what it is. So Approval Max can have all those rules and have it all automatically go to the right people and automatically give them reminders and that sort of thing. Hey, you, you know, you need to sign this off and then able to sign it off digitally you know in the cloud so again you don't have to print it you don't have to um, don't have to stamp it sign it physically or anything like that it's it's marked as approved and approval max and then that fires it into zero again automatically ready, ready for payment and it's got a full order trail it tells you who approved it it tells you when it was approved that sort of thing so it keeps it all all that audit and, and, and approval process tight, but also now completely in the cloud, completely digital. Uh, added bonus is that that PDF is now in your accounting system, so you don't have to put it in a filing cabinet or in a folder or something like that. Um, stack paper in the office. You know, I, I have seen offices where there's literally a wall of boxes, which is the last you know three years of paper because they don't quite know what to do with it. Um, this way, it's all just online and it's all automatic. So we do have clients with this exact process set up and you know works really well. Um, they might have managers at different sites and so it already worked from a remote working perspective. And then when it went into lockdown and that sort of thing, if people were at home, again, not a problem. They just carried on with their cloud setup process. Uh, we're talking to other clients that uh, realized when they got when we had lockdown that they couldn't print the paper and walk over to somebody's desk and say, please sign this. And so they quickly had to work out, oh, we'll send it by emails or we'll take scanners at home or printers at home and it actually gets quite complicated. And so now we're helping them to, to move to a process like this. So moving on to the next one I want to talk about is uh, data collection. So, you know, getting your invoices paid, get paid faster. As we know at the moment, cash is king. Um, we really, you know, when uncertain times, you want that money in the door in your bank account, and you don't want to be having to chase your customers to say why, you know, why haven't you paid? You need to pay. So there's a lot of things you can do to speed that up, and they can again be automatic. 
So the first thing that we can do is put a pay now button on your invoice. On the slide there, we've got the red arrow with an invoice with so where you can click on the invoice, put in your credit card, pay the bill. So if a customer goes, well, that's easy, they'll just they might just get in, just pay it on the spot. So almost immediate payment just because it was easy. The next thing, if they didn't take that easy route, is you know, you're gonna have to chase them if if they miss their payment date. So normally the, the, the manual process is look at your list who hasn't paid okay give them an email or give them a call well again more all modern accounting systems have features to help you with that whether it's automatically saying if an invoice is more than seven days overdue it just fires them out a friendly reminder hey did you did you get this invoice you know it's seven days overdue can you please pay and then if it's a month overdue Maybe it's a less friendly reminder saying, hey guys, you're a month overdue, come on, you know, we need to get paid. And if it's two months overdue, it can be an angry, an angry email. <laughs> and then you might get on the phone and things like that. But usually when people get those couple of reminders, you know, they say that it's the squeaky wheel that, that gets the oil. You know, if you're getting annoying reminders to pay that bill, you know, you'll pay that one first. That's where these uh, add-on products like your Debtor Daddy or Easy Collect, they, automate that process even more than maybe the basics that Zero or MYB can do. And they'll, they, they can take it to the next level if they need to. They can be sending text messages and things because sometimes, you know, emails don't get through, but text message does. So with all of these things, you know, you can you know, just get those bills paid. Um, with those payments, uh, click the button and pay. You know, you can use Stripe, you can use PayPal. There are, there are quite a few actual payment um, payment solutions out there and they they can integrate with your accounting system. So, uh, you know, it works really well. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, maybe having to check which one works for your accounting system the best, but um, but there are a lot of options out there and that's what we can help, you know, get that get that going for you. Right, so the next the next process I want to talk about is just your reporting. So it's very, very common that we see clients that are, you know, they might have a really nice report pack that they do, you know, monthly. Um, but then you look at how they do it and it's 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 running reports out of the accounting system, copy paste the report, copy paste the trial balance, mate. Sometimes it's even manually key in every number. And so the report pack looks really nice, but it takes the the, the accounts person you know, a whole day just to put the thing together, especially if there's multiple cost centers or multiple entities and you're consolidating. And so it's taken a whole day to put it together. And and then they and then, you know, God forbid there's a change and they go, oh, actually, hang on. So I realize there's a change. I need to spend another the whole day or half a day putting it together again. To, you know, just get the report together. Now, it's a lot of your accounting systems, you know, whether we can set up dashboards so that the reports are just automatic, whether we can connect your Excel report pack directly to your accounting system to make that, again, your report pack, which maybe was more very complex, we can connect it up, make it one click reporting. So we literally have got clients that used to take a day or two days to get reporting done, and now they open the spreadsheet, they click, you know, change it to from April to May, and they click refresh, and the report is ready. So that whole day got turned into one click. You know, the benefit of that is that they, they can look at the report now and go, OK, hang on, something, maybe something's not right. OK, yep, I you know, need to enter another couple of bills that I can see weren't approved yet. Enter those bills, go back to your report, one click, it's refreshed again. Usually that would have taken someone several hours just to go back and do that refresh of the report. So really, really, you know, just time saving, absolute time saving. Also keeps it accurate if no one's typing in the numbers to accidentally get them wrong. And um, it just works really well as also if we can get it in the cloud, you know, we don't have to print the reports and hand them to people. We don't have to email PDFs that people, you know, maybe they can't open them on their phone or their iPad. If it's in a cloud app, they can just open it and it works. So there are a lot of options with these reporting automation, uh, whether it's add-ons, whether it's business intelligence tools, whether it's um, 
tools that connect into your database. It, it depends on what accounting system you're using. But you know, really, really time saving, really worthwhile, um, and just just save time, save productivity. So, I mean, there are a lot more things that we can automate in in your accounting processes. Uh, I've got an article on my LinkedIn where it's just ten processes you can automate. I don't want to talk through them all, um, but these are probably three really key ones that are very, very common, and also you can do right now um, with whatever accounting system you're using or as long as it's remotely modern if it's a 15 year old system maybe you need an upgrade um, but but this stuff is easy the stuff's practical and it really will help the business you know, get paid faster easily approve your bills and get their reporting done quickly so now I think I'll just uh, move uh, hand it over to Craig for, for the next piece Thanks, Carl. Um, so really, uh, just to sort of wrap up a summary of what we looked at there, um, we've looked at some e-commerce um, and inventory options with WooCommerce and, and Sin7. Um, Josh also covered the shipping delivery um, with uh, ShipIt. Um, and we talked a bit about Inventory Planner, which was the uh, inventory forecasting software. Um, then we looked at uh, invoice approvals and processing. Uh, Carl talked about Approval Max. Um, Receipt Bank, um, there's also HubDoc, um, from Xero, uh, and then the payment solutions um, for invoice collections, Stripe, PayPal, um, and data collection options, Data Daddy and Easy Collect. Um, and then we talked a bit about reporting, uh, looking at sort of the standard reporting solutions and talked a bit about add-ons. Um, so that, that's just really a, a small number of add-on products. I mean, anybody that, if you have a look through Xero or through the other, software there's, there's there's hundreds of add-on products that you can use so just some we've touched on today and and also probably the point is that um you don't have to be using a zero or a, a cloud um finance solution necessarily you know these products are cloud-based and they integrate to other other finance systems so we we're doing work with with legacy systems uh, like um exo or sage or products like that so um yeah, so there are, are a number of options out there. So we've got quite a few questions that have come through, which is great. Um, before we jump, before we jump to the questions, um, maybe Carl, could you just sort of talk? Or maybe off I went off. But Carl, could you just talk a bit about uh, key topic at the moment, cash flow forecasting? So, it's the big issue for businesses, and you know what sort of cash flow tools um, are you seeing with um, with the with this with the finance systems, or, or potentially, you know. Um, outside of those systems. Yep, thanks, Greg. So yeah, cash flow forecasting is quite common, especially at the moment. You know, things have changed, got to work out that forecast. Um, there's a lot of tools out there again uh, with the short term forecast tools can often be done within accounting systems, you know, your zeros, your MYBs, that sort of thing that will often be able to give you a, you know, one month or you know the next four weeks the next six weeks because that's going to base the data based on your debtors and creditors and things like that okay you need you're going to got this due date this due date and your customers should pay you on these days so here's the the next say four weeks and then if you're wanting to forecast further out you know six months or a year or two years you're going to want a a, a full cash flow forecasting tool especially if you're you know applying for any loans or so, um you know government loans and things like that wanting to have some proof of your you know that you how you're going to pay the loans back and that sort of thing you know then then there are larger tools that do the full balance sheet cash flow profit and loss uh, one, one we use quite a lot is, is castaway forecasting it, it can it can build that forecast all the way out you, you put your assumptions in of cash and who's going to pay you put your budget in and it will it will spit out the the full report for you and you just adjust it as you as you need to there are um, other what I would call simpler cash flow forecasting tools, still very good, um, that have integrations with, with the likes of Zero and things like that, which is you got your Spotlight and you got Futurely as examples. So again, they'll do those cash flow forecasts. Maybe not quite as many features as Castaway, but still very strong tools. Um, and we do get clients asking us to help them set that up, show them how to use it, and then they can take it to, to re-forecast each month and, and keep that rolling. Okay, thanks, Carl. Um, that's great. 
So perhaps uh, we've got a few questions sort of first of all on e-commerce, um, around the cost of e-commerce. And uh, Josh, do you, want to, do you want to touch on those ones? Yeah, I can look after those ones. So there's been quite a few questions around the shipping system and um, the, the ease of integration through to the courier companies and which courier companies does it integrate? There's a question here around, does it integrate with the, the bulk freight companies as well, which is a good question. So firstly, Starship at the, the platform that I've shown you there has direct integrations with New Zealand Post, DHL, Fastway, a couple of others from memory, but um, not not all the couriers, but for those ones, there is a direct integration. It's, it's a really easy setup. Starship will help you along the way. They'll, they'll even talk to the, the courier companies and get your account details and make sure that all your negotiated rates pull through to the system as well. That, that's a very simple process. The question around bulk freight though, um, generally not. The bulk freight companies tend to be smaller, a little bit more bespoke. They, they don't have the internal systems to be able to integrate to Starship, but so the limitations actually at their end, although we are starting to see the likes of main freight have direct integrations with them given, um, but generally it sits outside of the Starship platform, which is designed more for that courier type package. Um, there's some questions here around the cost of e-commerce setup. Um, and it's important to look at that cost in two parts, I think. Generally, you need someone who specializes in the design of e-commerce websites to look after the front end element of, of e-commerce. And then that could be a different person doing the back end setup, which is really important to get the product structure correct, the integrations through to your, your inventory system correct. But they could be two different people. But uh, the design cost, you know, a simple website could start anywhere from three to five grand. Um, all the way up to unlimited really but you know it's one of those things the more you invest in it the better the result at the end of the day um, but certainly those really expensive websites in the days gone by are, are not so common anymore and um, the cost has come down quite a lot it really depends on how picky you are with design as to, as to the overall cost of, of a website the actual back end structure is very simple to get set up um, there's a question here around how do you keep the cost of all the app tools down? Does the cost of these tools outweigh the manual processes? And would it be dependent on the entity size? Well, I think it's a difficult question to answer quickly, but really you have to look at it in terms of um, people costs. So if you've got a system that's automating all the data entry um, and you're processing thousands of orders, and in the past you might've had to have a person sitting there all day, every day processing those invoices, and all of a sudden it's automated for $500 a month or whatever it might be. Well, that's a significantly less investment than having a person on the floor there. So it's not nice to be talking about replacing people with computers, but that's the reality of the age that we live in. Um, and it's just, it's an easy calculation to make to say, hey, what's the cost of these apps versus having another person on board to, to maintain that level of um, process? Yeah, I could um, jump in there as well. Jump in there as well, Josh. Um, and just uh, make a few comments on that one. So, I mean, also I think, you know, one of the points is the number of add-ons that you have. And, and sometimes when you, on the negative side, when you add up all the add-ons, um, they, they can, they can you know, get to quite a large monthly payment. So, you know, there is a point where you should look at an integrated ERP and, um, you know, um, integrated ERPs have, have the features, um, you know, at just a, a one-off monthly payment. So, you know, that, that can often work out sort of a cheaper solution. Uh, you know, I haven't figured out exactly the number, but it's probably around four add-ons or something like that. So that's uh, something to keep in mind as well. Uh, quite a few questions here around uh, accounts payable and, and reporting. Carl, do you want to jump into some of those? Yep. Yep, thanks, Craig. So, yeah, I've got a few questions about, um, yeah, or especially on the getting, getting paid. Um, so somebody asked, can we can we specify who's allowed to pay by credit card and who's not? And I mean, the answer to that is it depends on what accounting system you're using. You know, again, if you're on a, a more advanced one, you'll you'll be able to have different customer groups that have that receive different payment types versus not. Um, there was also a comment about yep, the the payment providers, you know, they charge a fee for for you know credit card payment. And often it's possible to make sure that fee is added on to the payment or, or split with the customer um, or you choose it as a cost to get to get paid faster. Uh, also worth 
having a look at the different payment options, they do have different fee structures. Uh, so some might cost more, but they're very easy to set up. Others may be a little bit harder to set up, but not um, as you know, costly. So worth looking around um, with that. And, and again, it very much depends what, exactly what accounting system you're using to know which ones might be directly compatible and which ones are not. Um, yeah, moving on to the some of the other questions, Josh. Do you want to jump on to the your next one? Okay, let's have a look at what we got here. Um, got a question around what's the best manufacturing tool or best best add-on for zero for manufacturers? Um, that would that would really depend on the type of manufacturing that you do. Um, a lot of the add-ons really only cater to assembly as such, where um, the bill of materials pulls the components together. So the likes of Unleashed and Sin 7 are very good in that respect. There's subtle differences between the two. Um, Sin 7 offers a lot more flexibility around the production job, partially complete production jobs. You can, um, you can have bombs within a bomb, multi-stage production, that sort of thing, whereas Unleashed is very solid integrating through the GL from a production job as well. So the subtle differences, but essentially they're the same thing. There is another tool called MRP Easy. Um, I haven't looked too much into it, but it does appear to do more of the, the routing and scheduling side of manufacturing. It really depends on the type of manufacturing that you do. I've got a question here around how do you do a non-priced packing slip in zero without printing an invoice? Um, probably time to look at an add-on really, uh, something like SIN 7 would allow you to do a lot more detailed document design um, and have different stages of processing as well. So you would have a document specifically for the, for the packing process and include all sorts of information on there that doesn't need to be passed through to an invoice. Um, but in saying that, that, there is a way to do non-price packing slips in zero. You just need to set up a different document template for that. What else we got here? Oh, there was a question around time zone differences and Stripe payments clearing, which is very technical, but I think once you start getting to the point where you've got multiple payment facilities running on your e-commerce website, you might even be processing sales in multiple countries. It does get very difficult to reconcile that all through one zero account. And I go back to that batching process that I talked about with SIN 7, where you can batch all these sales and you've got some ability to choose the time period of which you're batching right down to the minutes of the day. So you could say, I want to batch all orders from today up till 10 p.m. Um, and that fits nicely with the way that the likes of Payment Express settle their settle their day, daily invoices. Um, but their cutoff is 10 o'clock, so you can kind of match that. But eventually it gets, gets to the point where you, you just simply can't match it 100%. And so we start to use clearing accounts in zero where we just batch all the sales and post them to a clearing account. And then we offset that against um, the fees and, the, and the, the bank transactions that come through. And, and do some sense checking to make sure that we are receiving the money for everything. But it does get to a point where it's impossible to actually match it 100% perfectly. Yeah, I'll jump in there as well, Josh, on that um, clearing one. So, yeah, I think the way you do it um, is setting up different, particularly different bank accounts um, for the different payment types. Someone asked a question about um, how do I deal with, deal with credit card commission charges. So that, that's where the clearing accounts come in. If you um, if you have it by payment type, if you can you can batch as you suggested, Josh, um, and then when you have those reconciliation differences with commissions, um, you, know, you can then or charge backs even you can then um, process those, and see them in the clearing accounts. Because as you get higher volume, um, yeah, as you pointed out, it gets pretty impossible to, to try and reconcile. So, so yeah, separate separate accounts by payment type. Um, Carly, there's a couple of questions we've had around um, the accounts payable. Um, options and, and setting them up with other systems. Can you have a look at that? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Greg. So, yeah, I mean, the accounts payable options. So, the one that I had on there was obviously a zero one. Um, you definitely, there definitely are options for, for all, you know, all accounting systems um, or an ERP systems. It's just a matter of finding the right one. I mean, there's a lot out there. Uh, we can help with, with getting the right one for you. Um, and also bear in mind that different accounting systems and ERP systems have some of that functionality potentially built in. And um, it depends 
you know, which features you need, you know, do you need scanning, do you need approval? Um, and, you know, what can your system do already versus what needs an add-on? So I think really it depends on what system you're on and you know, worth just having a chat. If, if someone's looking for a specific solution, um, probably contact us afterwards and just tell us about your current setup and we can we can point you in the right direction or help you, um, you know, get the right solution. Um, also, I actually had a couple more questions on the on the payment is payment uh, auto payment thing as well. So someone said they're on zero and they want to how do we set up the the payment thing? I mean, the easiest one is is to set up a Stripe account. Um, and then within zero, you can just do this, just tick a box and, and get it going. Um, but like I say, there are other options uh, as well. Um, and if you're using, if you're not using zero and you're using MYB or something like that, um, then it, you definitely can do it as well. Get the credit card payments onto your invoices. Um, it's just a matter of potentially using an add-on to do it rather than um, directly and, and it depends what vision of MYB you're on, of course. Um, so again, may, may, maybe worth having uh, having a chat just to what, what version of MYB you are on. Um, do you need to you know, upgrade it if it's an old version or um, you know, they have a lot of products? So, so a lot of options, probably need to know the specifics of what exact version you're on to give you a, a specific answer. Uh, there's one here around uh, reporting tools and um, well, also a question around the, the one zero add-on that you see that pro provides the greatest efficiency. Um, I mean, on the efficiency side, I think it's accounts payable. Um, if you have the volume, there's definitely a, a you know, significant people saving and time saving and approval processes, um, scanning and um, payment. But we've, we've seen reporting solutions save people days you know, days a month. So um, with things like Blixio, which was um, when we we're talking around Excel um, reporting for, for management reporting packs, that one can save um, days because it links directly to the data. Um, so you don't have to go through the whole that whole sort of manual Excel process every, every month with reporting. So um, yeah, I, I would say it was it probably was around reporting as, as, as the biggest benefits. Uh, we had a couple more there, Josh, I think around um, stock management, um, uh, restaurant. Yeah, so the, the the best tool that we've seen for hospitality, and it's, it's, it's actually not really our specialty, but um, it would be Counter is probably the best one there. Um, for a cloud-based system that, that integrates with Xero, that seems to be the gold standard. There's a lot, a lot of other hospital-specific products like um, OneTap, with Bang and, and those sorts of systems, but they tend to be more um, server based or slightly older technology. So, so Counter is definitely this one for that. Counter with a K. Okay, like um, there's another one there, Josh, around, um, around uh, building materials, tools and systems to manage raw materials. Yeah, well, any any inventory system that has a production module of any sort would um, would do the job. Typically, we would use Unleashed or Sin7 in that space, though. Um, Unleashed in particular focuses on food and beverage and, and the process behind, say, manufacturing beer or wine. Um, Sin7 has a slightly broader use, um, and we've got those that are um, semi-industrial, um, might be assembling construction products or um, electronics, that sort of thing. Uh, Sim7 can be quite good there too for serial tracking, batch tracking, and that sort of thing. But essentially, as long as the product's got a bill of materials and a production job module, um, the idea behind the bill of materials is it sucks in all the components and all the cost of the raw materials and rolls that cost up into the finished good. It becomes cost of sales at the end of it. Just got one come through uh, question on zero and it's multi entity, multi currency entity situation. Uh, can answer that one. Um, so it's zero in its essence is a not a multi company, multi entity tool. You know, you have a zero per company and there's no automatic consolidation. Um, function. Now we can use again reporting tools to connect to multiple zeros and then consolidate from there. Um, 
otherwise, and they're talking about multi-currency with the BOM function, bearing in mind that you would use as an add-on for your, your BOM function with your inventory. So, so likely you would use a SIN7 or something like that, which can handle your multi-currency and your inventory and bill of materials. And the last bit of the question asking about does Zero use Clarity or Crystal uh, for reporting? I mean, the short answer to that is no, it doesn't. So Clarity and Crystal tend to be probably an MYVXO user, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, so tends to, those tend to connect to your SQL server-based solutions more so. Um, so Zero would use other reporting tools yeah, to do your to do your reporting, and and Zero uses um, Word docs for your doc templates, not Clarity. So I think we're almost there, um, guys. Is there any others? That, that Just had a wee look at that question around um, raw material manage management again. I didn't realise they were saying without the bill of materials. Um, really, the only answer to that is a whole lot of journals. Um, not, not ideal, really. Um, you can post the expense, or you can post the purchasing of the materials to, to a GL, but you would have to be doing some journals to move that to work in progress or cost of goods. Ideally, uh, the inventory system takes the load there rather than trying to shuffle it around the accounting system. It can be done, but it's all by way of journal, really. OK, that's good. All right, thanks, Josh. I think I think we're about there. Um, there's not a lot more questions on the chat we haven't answered, so um, we'll, we'll call it a little bit early. Uh, so thanks very much, everyone. Um, and uh, we have our final uh, back to business webinar next week. So revenue recognition and impairment of assets with the auditing team and the technical team. So uh, you know, please join us for that one next Thursday. Uh, don't forget the BDO COVID microsite. There's a lot of information on that microsite um, and have regarding COVID and, and um, various government initiatives and, and commentary from BDO. So um, yeah, have a look there. I'll put up the Old Shift website, which is the, the BDO Cloud um, Advisory Services. So yeah, have a look at that and we'll uh, be posting this webinar um, up on, um, on online so you can, um, you can view that. So thanks for everyone for attending uh, and we'll we'll close down there. Cheers.